There we go. Okay, now re refresh your thing. You see it? Hey, it's doing a video. Okay, so we got that. So uh, yeah, yep, time, yep, yeah. there you go. So it should be there now. Let's check. Okay. I'm ready to fight this body. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Because you added it. Mm hmm Okay, so what is gonna happen is Why is it not showing up on his timeline? He just accepted it. Did you accept it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why is it not on his timeline? I think I might. This is weird. I think you're going to go live, and I think I might better go live. What do you think? We both need to go live? Just mm. make sure, because we got like a minute. Okay, let, let me see. So I would just type in there, listen in live for my interview with the Speak Up and Inspire series, and we'll just do it that way. No. Okay, we'll go ahead and do it. With what? The Speak Up and Inspire series. Yeah, I got you. Can you one second? Okay, it's tight, but y'all are in there. <coughs> are we in there? Yeah, y'all yeah, in there. and 
and basically stating what self-care means to you personally. Not the dictionary, not what everybody else thinks it is, but self-care. What does self-care mean to you personally? And then you're going to follow that up with what are your self-care goals for 2020, your personal self-care goals. So we are speaking with Steve today, and at the end of the interview, I'm going to ask him the question, what are your 2020 self-care goals, as we will with all of our future guests in 2020. So plan to do it with us. Steve is going to do it with us tonight. So please plan to do it with us this week to support Steve um, for him being a first guest here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. We like to talk to our guests in a very personal environment. So we are at my home right now. And also, we don't give out questions. This is very live, this is very natural, and that is some of the comments that I have gotten, some of the feedback that I've gotten about the Speak Up Inspire series, that people enjoy the fact that it's very candid and it's very personal. So, if you are watching tonight, I wanna to say thank you for watching. We truly appreciate you, and I hope that you will join the self-care challenge with myself and Steve Govan this year. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into it now that we are all hooked up and ready to go. Um, Steve, can you tell us a little bit about you? Just, are you a business owner? What do you, what do, you do? Absolutely, my name is Steve Govan, and yes, I am a business owner. Um, I own a DJ business and have since 2010. Based out of the Charlotte area, but I work a lot out of, out of town, Greenville area, South Carolina quite a bit. Um, but I primarily, uh, based my DJ business around weddings and a lot of corporate events. Um, I don't do clubs or any, anything like that. Um, that's, that's just not my forte. Um, I, I love doing weddings um, and I love doing corporate events. So that's basically what I do. Um, and that's, that, that's it. That's okay. it. That's my passion. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your, about your background? You work, mainly do um, work here in the North Carolina, South Carolina area. Are you from here? Absolutely. I'm from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Harrisburg, go Harrisburg. <laughs> Suburb of Charlotte. Um, it's about probably five minutes outside of the Charlotte area. Um, I moved to Charlotte, but ended up going back to Cabarrus County. Um, we're just basically a little a little brother of the Mecklenburg County area. Um, I love my hometown. Really, really love my hometown. Great people. Always gonna shout out Harrisburg. If you're looking for a place to move, Harrisburg is your place. Okay. Um. Yeah. We're right here on the Charlotte Harrisburg line. So Absolutely. literally, we we could probably walk to Harrisburg Absolutely. from here. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. We love Harrisburg ourselves. We start venturing towards Harrisburg after probably a month of being here. We love to go explore, and um, so now I go there for a lot of things now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, awesome. it's better than going that way where all the traffic is. Yes. Go towards awesome. Harrisburg. Awesome. Yes. Got it, got it. So um, we talked about what we wanted to emphasize tonight, and for you, it was important that you share your health journey. Um, tell us a little bit about your health background, which is the basis for what we're talking about tonight. Um, well, I mean, this is something that really uh, comes close to my heart here in 2020. As a lot of people out here know on Facebook, I probably post about it every single day. Um, but I was one of the individuals who really took my health for granted. Um, I was one of the people who thought that it never could happen to me. Um, I was one of the people who felt like I could eat anything, drink anything, um, walk around, do anything, and wouldn't nothing happen to me. You know, um, like a lot of people walk around uh, thinking that way. But lo and behold, yes, it can happen to you. Um, and I'm a prime example of that uh, back in September of this year, and yes, um, I do have high blood pressure, okay. which is uh, very prevalent amongst uh, African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, as so is diabetes, and I keep this health thing very real, and I'm gonna be mm -hmm. very real with you tonight about it. Um, and I was one of the ones who, you know, would run out of blood pressure medicine on Thursday, 
have to go to work on Friday and Saturday and of course, you know, church and everything is on Sunday and pharmacy opens up on Monday and I was one of those ones who say, well, you know, I get it when the pharmacy opens on Monday. Okay. You know, not knowing that not taking my blood pressure medicine on Friday, on Saturday and on Sunday, um, that, that fluid would continue to build up on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I basically took it for granted. Okay. And um, in September, went to South Carolina on Labor Day weekend to do a pool party. Mm -hmm. And usually when I DJed, my left foot would swell up from standing uh, for four hours or so. And then it would go down maybe a day later. Well, when I went to South Carolina to do the, the pool party, I came back to Charlotte, had a little drive, went to sleep that night, and I woke up the next morning and both my feet were swollen. Wow. And um, I took it as, okay, did you take your medicine like you were supposed to? No. And then I doubled up on my diuretic without doctor's permission, <laughs> thinking that I could release the fluid off of my body. Okay. And uh, what happened was my legs started swelling. And I was like, well, still didn't go to the doctor. Take more diuretic. Okay. Think that you can get rid of the fluid. Oh, <laughs> and so um, my class reunion was coming up, Central Barracks, 1989. <laughs> It was coming up, and I was like, man, you know, I'm really swole up. Yeah. So um, I remember getting ready to go to my class reunion and grabbing the blazer out of my closet. And during this time, numerous of people have saw my feet, even my sisters, and they were like, Steve, you know, you need to go get your feet checked out. Something's going on with you. Yeah. But I was like, you know, it'll go down. Just take it for granted. Superman. <laughs> it can't happen to me. Okay. And so... Um, I went in and got my blazer out of the closet to go to class union, and I went to button it, and I couldn't even button my blazer. I was like, whoa, man, this is bad. So I was supposed to go out after the class union, and I ended up coming back home and laying down because I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And so um, a day went by that Sunday came, and Sunday dinner I ate just a little bit, and I was just full, mm -hmm. miserable full. Mm -hmm. And so I, I went for a walk and really couldn't walk that far, turn around and came back home. And then that night I went to bed. And um, I remember falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm not afraid to say this, God touched my body mm -hmm. because it was nobody but him. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I couldn't breathe. And so I started hitting myself in the chest and then I worked my way. I set up and I guess the fluid was coming down out of my lungs back into my stomach. And I made my way out to the living room I and I was, I was just, you know, barely breathing. And I knew it was that time. Like so many men out here was so stubborn. I knew it was that time to go to the hospital. So I took a shower. You know, mama says, you know, put on you some clean drawers. Because <laughs> I knew when I left and I went to the hospital, Tiffany, I knew I wasn't coming back. Right, right. And so when I went to the hospital and I told the receptionist, what was going on with me. Of course, they rushed me back, but they stopped me at the scale and they weighed me. And the scale said 375 pounds. Never in my life had I been that big. So it was all water. It was all fluid. And so they hooked me up to machines and everything and seeing I didn't have a heart attack and then the doctor came in and he said, your body is full of fluid. And so um, they started me on Lasix. I started releasing the fluid. I lost 42 and a half pounds in three days. 42, that's how much fluid 
that I was taking, carrying in my body. So I'm a believer. And I know it's nothing by the, but by the grace of God right. that I live through that whole thing and did not suffocate and die. Because as we know, it's a lot of people like Reggie White. Mm -hmm. He died from the same thing. And um, it could have been me. Mm -hmm. But yet I'm walking around like everything is okay. <laughs> You know, so I stayed in the hospital up until Thursday. Um, I had heart mammograms. I had a heart catheterization. They do not put you to sleep anymore doing a heart catheterization. So they went in my wrist, and I felt the whole thing, them going up through my arm, across my chest, and into my heart to make sure it wasn't any blockage that was there. Mm -hmm. And I remember praying to God. I said, God, if you get me off this table, back up in that room, right. I'll change my whole lifestyle. Right. Okay. And so I, I made it back up in the room. To make a long story short, they diagnosed me with congestive heart failure. Mm. Um, and here I am. So I remember Dr. Kelly, he coming in and he's saying, <laughs> you know, Mr. Govan, do you want to live? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, Dr. Kelly, I want to live. He said, you need a total life epiphany. I said, what is, what is that? He said, a total life change. Whatever you're doing right now, you need to be totally the opposite of. Okay. And I said, okay. So from that day forward, my life has just totally changed. I changed my eating habits. I exercise now. Um, and, you know, it, it's funny because... They told me everything that people would say mm -hmm. about me, mm -hmm. and, and it was kind of it, it, it was. It's, I just live in that moment right now. They said um, I've had people to ask me, "Do you did you have gastric bypass?" Okay. I've had people to ask me, "You got a lap band?" Okay. I've had people call me Richard Simmons, and the doctor told me that they would do that. That they would try to discourage you. Right. But I don't care what anybody says about me because they didn't feel what I felt. Right. Mm -hmm. Or neither do they know my story. Right. So, um, you know, I was one of those ones who I stayed at, at the watching football out drinking like it was going out of style. But, you know, I asked myself, how long did I think that I was going to be able to live that life before something happened to me? And somebody out there, if I could tell you, you can't continue to do what you're doing and your natural body hold up to it. Right. Something is going to happen. Right. How long ago did this happen? Oh, uh, that was September. That was September of last year, 2019. Like a couple months September. ago, September? September. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was September. Okay, so what, what were you, tell me what kind of foods and stuff were you eating before? I ate everything under the sun. <laughs> it didn't matter uh, what I ate. Uh -huh. If I was hungry, it didn't matter. I mean, those of you know, if you're in the entertainment business, you get off at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So IHOP, Midnight uh -huh. Diner, right. uh, Waffle House, right. all those places are your best friend. Cookout, <laughs> all those places. And you eat that stuff, and then you go and lay straight down on it. Right. And that's not cool. You can't continue to do that and something doesn't happen. Right. And the funny thing about it, I compare everything to it now. You know, we don't put anything in our car and expect it to drive. Right, true. So why why would we in turn put anything in our body and expect us to feel all right? You're right. You're right. You know, so that's that's basically it. So I was eating anything. Uh, drinking anything. I was a real heavy drinker. Okay. I was a real heavy crown. I love Crown <laughs> Royal. Uh <-huh>. um, <coughs> and, and the sad thing, this was sad. And I can say this. Um, it was it was hard. It tore my heart up because um, to have a child, your child, mm -hmm. sitting in the hospital room and the doctor come in and ask, you know, uh, are you a heavy drinker? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to tell the doctor the truth right. if you're a heavy drinker. 
So you want to say no. Right. But you look at your child. And your child knows your habits and what you do every day. Right. And they're looking at you like, Daddy, see, please tell the doctor the truth. Right. And so you have to tell the doctor, yes, I have, I drink, I, I have a drink every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm not, and honestly, I'm not ashamed to talk about it now, Tiffany. I was one of the people who, you know, I wouldn't talk about what was going on in my life. I was prideful. I'm on Facebook Live right now <laughs> saying this about me. So I can try to help somebody else right. that was right. going through the same thing. Right, right. You know. Okay, so pre-September, eating everything, cook out, walk the house, drinking Crown, enjoying your life, so forth and so on. What are you doing now? What are you eating now? Um, I am. I just started eating chicken again in the last uh, two weeks or so. Okay. But before that, um. I was pescatarian. Okay. I ate nothing but fish okay. and vegetables and things of that sort, and and that's how uh, the weight came off of me. Um, drink a lot, a lot of water, a okay. lot of water, no sodas or anything like that. You know what I mean? A lot of water, a lot of water. Right. And if you drink, the doctor said it was cool to drink red wine. Okay. You know, but uh, other than that, that's that's basically it. And, you know, they put me on a 2,000 milligram sodium diet. Okay. We don't pay attention at all no. to our sodium levels. <laughs> and the nutritionist came in and she was talking to me. She had a bag. And the everyday stuff that we eat, mm -hmm. tons of sodium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A sodium is a magnet for fluid. Right. So if you consume a lot of salt, your body will retain a lot of fluid. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I watch my sodium intake. That's why, I mean, I posted it uh, last week, put the salt shaker down. Okay. There's plenty of other ways that you could go um, and season your foods rather than salt. Okay, let's hear it because I'm a um, seasoner. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God, what's the name? <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Dash. Okay. Mrs. Dash. <laughs> has all kind of seasonings that are out there that you could use. Okay. You know what I mean? And you're on a 2,000 milligram. Which is not a lot. Which is, it's a tablespoon. Yeah. It's exactly <laughs> what it is. Right. So, um, split it up. Okay. Split it up. Split it up. There was, um, there, there's three meals in a day and then you got an extra one. Mm -hmm. You know? So, you could split it up. Split that little tablespoon <laughs> up between that and, and use other alternatives. And I'm telling you, once your palate gets used to not having that sodium, mm -hmm. when you get that, when you taste that sodium, mm -hmm. oh my God, man, you, you, you'll, you'll, spit, you'll spit it out because okay. it's so strong. Because it's so much. Yeah, it's okay. just so, it's overbearing. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming your grocery habits had to stop too. Well, let me tell you, and it's crazy. To eat healthy mm -hmm. costs more than to mm -hmm. eat <laughs> junk food. Right. Right. So um, you you tend to go uh, from from the food line and the Harris Teeters, and you try to go to Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. I'm a Trader Joe. I love Trader Joe's. Okay. I love you know, and you can take your time. Honestly, you can take your time in Harris Teeters. You can take your time in Food Line. Pick stuff up and read the back of it. Okay. Just don't pick it up and throw it in your buddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because that's where the habits. Right. take place. Um, if it's white rice there, guess what? It's brown rice there too. Right. You know what I mean? Get used to it. And what I've noticed, Tiffany, if we apply common sense, <laughs> mm -hmm. common sense, mm -hmm. you know when you sit down in front of a plate mm -hmm. if you're really supposed to be eating something or not. <laughs> That's true. You know it. <laughs> That's true. You know when you sit down and the thing about it is your conscience always tell you you don't have any business eating this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my conscience tells me that all the time. And yeah. I give it anyway. and, and, that, and that's what we do. Right. But, you know, and then we do that over and over and over again. And the crazy thing about it is, you know, it's easy to go and just buy a bigger size clothes mm -hmm. and cover it up. Mm -hmm. Just continue to cover the problem up, problem up, problem up until something bad happens. And I'm not afraid to say it. Now, $34,000 mm -hmm. 
worth of medical bills later. Mm. Here I sit. $34,000 mm. wow. from not taking care of myself. So I remember the nurse telling me, she said, either you can pay the farmer mm. or you can pay the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. It's either one. Wow. <laughs> All right. So went to the doctor's pre-September. Found out that you, we already had high blood pressure. I already had high blood pressure. And then you found out in the hospital that you had congestive heart failure. Yep. So you had to change your whole life, life your, your way of thinking, your eating habits, the way you shop for food. What about exercise? I'm, I'm, I'm a gym bum now. <laughs> I, I really am. And it's crazy because all the time that I use in the bars, yeah. I use it in the gym now. Okay. For a good purpose. I just swap okay. everything out and I feel so much better. Okay. Um, not not even counting the hundred dollar tabs that you would have <laughs> when you left bar. when you left the bar. Uh -huh. You know, versus your twenty nine dollars a month at right. the gym. Right. Yeah, I can take that. So I'll take that too. switch <laughs> any day. Okay. But um but yes, I do I do work I work out probably five to six days mm -hmm. a week. Um do and, and my advice is do something. Right. You know, and that's what the doctor told me, the heart doctor told me. He said, do something. You know, I don't care if you if you leave out and go for a walk around the parking lot. Mm -hmm. do, something. do something. You okay. know what I mean? Just don't sit still. Mm -hmm. And definitely don't eat and lay down on it. Right. Do something. So that's that's where I, where I am. Um, all the personal trainers and you know I I read so much you know about all the different diets. Mm -hmm. I, I need a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I need and and forgive me when I say this for all the personal trainers that are out there. <laughs> you know I love y'all. Y'all do a great job, and it's a way of living. But if you would just do something, <laughs> you could be your own personal trainer. Yes. And and accountability has a lot to do with that. I mean, you have friends you go shopping with, mm -hmm. your friends you go out partying with. Right. You know, why not have a friend that you that can hold you accountable to making sure that you can you set a goal to do this and this week that this gets done. Right. You know, and I'm a firm believer that. A, a friend doesn't agree with you about everything. Everything a friend tells you isn't is isn't something that makes you smile. Right. So choose that friend. And all of us got that friend who right. will really tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know. So um, go to that friend and tell that friend what your what your goal is, what you want to do, and please to hold you accountable to it, and and, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To start, you you, you got to start it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I like it. Um, we went to um, Lotus Living Art Studio last weekend because with our with us having the self care challenge, we are partnering with people that are providing the tools for self care. So we went to Lotus Living Art Studio and spoke to Vicky, who is the founder, Miss Vicky. Hello, <laughs> um, and she uh, is a yoga instructor. Um, she's also into healthy living. When we were there, there was a woman there who was showing people how to eat healthy while we were there meeting with her. Um, and so that was one thing she said to me because I told her that I have chronic pain in my legs and my back. And I was telling her that the doctors have t told me that yoga and water sports will help my legs. But I haven't done it because my life is so busy. <laughs> and she said the same thing. She said, just hold yourself accountable, put it on your calendar, yoga every Monday or yoga every Wednesday, and just make yourself accountable. So one thing I wanted you to share with those that are watching and those that will continue to watch because we play these over and over again, our interviews, um, what would you say to our black men who are out here doing what you were doing, clubbing, eating whatever they want to eat, in the restaurants every other night, what would you say to our black men? And I'm not, I'm not excluding other races, but high blood pressure, congestive heart failure are, are high in our, in our, um, in our culture. 
what would you say to our black men out here and just men in general about taking care of themselves before well, it gets to the point where you rap? Well, I, I can say one word that that we as men we have and we we have to get rid of and that one thing is called pride. Uh, we have a lot of pride, and pride won't allow us to do the things that we need to do right. in life as far as um, go to the doctor, mm -hmm. yes. you know, schedule doctor's appointments, prostate check, you know, um, sugar, mm -hmm. your, di your diabetes, your high blood pressure. Get those things checked. I'll tell you, um, since I've been sharing my story and since I came out and, and shared, you know, um, what I'm doing now in my life, I get a lot mm -hmm. of inboxes, Okay. Um, which is good. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You don't have to, you don't have to talk to me on, on my Facebook wall. Mm -hmm. You can inbox me. A whole lot of guys have inboxed me to talk about health. You know, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real really real with you. Okay. Uh, and, and dealing with high blood pressure, you and dealing with diuretics. Diuretics affect guys. Right. Um, affect guys in their personal mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. So a lot of guys don't deal with their high blood pressure and their diuretics because they feel like that they can't perform. Therefore, satisfy their woman. Uh, whether it be their wife, their girlfriend, or whatsoever. And I'm telling the truth. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there okay, because I need to know what, what, is, what does it do to... Well, <laughs> well <laughs> certain diuretics that you... I mean, you, we're keeping it real, right? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're keeping it real. Certain diuretics that you take mm -hmm. um, won't... You'll have trouble having an erection. Okay, okay. And um, I'm just keeping it flat real. No, that's what we want. And, um, <laughs> and, and a lot of guys won't take it for that fact okay. right there. But I, I tell you this, there's many diuretics that are out there. Sometimes you don't have to settle for what the doctor, the diuretic that the doctor puts you on. Mm -hmm. Go back mm -hmm. to the doctor and tell the doctor what's happening and let them put you on another one. Okay. Or another one, or hey, Take care of yourself <laughs> and try to work your way off but, of it right. in the first place, mm -hmm. and then you won't have to deal with it. Period. Right. But men, uh, we we definitely have to drop the pride. You said something um, when you were talking a while ago. That's um, a death sentence. Mm -hmm. It's it's a death sentence. A word that you said. I call it the death sentence now, and that word is busy. We can busy ourselves right in the grave. That's true. <laughs> so true. That's true. You know, if we don't take the time, mm -hmm. we waste. I, I want you to really pay attention to the minutes in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, well, I worked all day long and I had to go do this and I had to go do that. And I just did not have time. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you waste an hour a day. In your life. Mm -hmm. Whether it be. Get rid of the reality TV show. Mm -hmm. That reality TV show. Is not healthy for you anyway. <laughs> That's true. That's 30 minutes or an hour right there. That you could be doing something. Right. You know. Um, but it, I talk about the components of our health. You know. Um, we have spiritual health. We have physical health. Mm -hmm. We have emotional health. And all three of them, they work interchangeably. Yeah, mental health. Don't forget that. Mental health. And mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You're, yeah, you're a psychiatrist. <laughs> and they, they all work interchangeably. Mm -hmm. And you have to take care of every one of them in order to live a healthy life. That's true. You know, but you were asking about men. Uh, back to men. Men, hey, check this out. Drop the pride. Make a doctor's appointment. Hey, Go. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, you'll go. Trust me, you'll end up there. Mm -hmm. You'll go eventually, you'll end up going. Got it, got it. Um, congestive heart failure for me is, is sensitive. My father 
um, passed away from congestive heart failure. Um, and it was not, it was not easy looking at someone going from probably bigger than you going down to nothing um, from congestive heart failure. Um, so now that you have that, like, did you know anything about congestive heart failure before? Didn't know, I, I didn't know a thing. Though. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't know a thing. All I knew, and now I know, um, your bottom, your bottom champ, two chambers of your heart are supposed to beat at 60%. Mm -hmm. And mine were beating at 40 to 45%. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the doctor flat out told me for a 48 year old man, my heart was like that of one who did heroin every day. Oh, ow. No, you, you're right. Ow, ow. So I'm not here. I thought you were going to say a hundred year old. No, 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 no. I'm out, I'm out here. I'm out here. I'm, I'm partying. I'm dancing. I'm working and everything else. And the doctor told me my heart was that of somebody who did heroin every day. Every day. And so, one thing about the heart, though, the heart can rebuild itself. Mm -hmm. And once they said that, once he told me that, mm -hmm. oh, it was on and popping. <laughs> you know, and I go back next month uh -huh. um, in February, I go back to the heart doctor and uh, to run more tests to see if my heart has begun to heal. Mm -hmm. I'm praying that I'm, I'm up in the 50s, okay. that I'm headed back. To full strength in my heart, but the lungs, mm -hmm. they can't rebuild. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's it's it's, it's something how we we take care of the outer shell, mm -hmm. real good. Mm -hmm. You know, but we don't take care of the inner mm -hmm. shell. We just continue to cover it up. That's right. what we do. Right. Yep. So um, that's that's kind of where I am with that. I'm working on a rebuild. Okay, so I know that the eating, changing your eating, um, living healthier, eating healthier, exercising, so forth and so on. I know that had a lot to do with your blood pressure. I know it also helps with your heart, but what are you doing specifically to build your heart back up? Well, um, I do a lot of cardio. Okay. Um, I, look, I do probably about 60 minutes of cardio a day. Okay. You know, um, in some form, whether it be walking on a treadmill, elliptical, Machine, which I've, I've learned to love now. I used to despise. Okay. But I've learned to love it. And every piece of equipment in the gym that you hate is the piece of equipment that you need to be on. Okay. Because that's the, what's going to help you. Um, the stairs, mm -hmm. I do that. Um, spin, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've started to love the bike. Okay. I love the bike. Uh, the bike is a challenge. It's, it's, it's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we rode bicycles all our lives yeah. when we were young, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Something about that stationary bike, though, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, we're, it's, it, different. We're, it's different. It's yeah. a different ball game. Uh -huh. But it's, it's really, it's real. I dropped, I dropped some pounds okay. since I started spinning. So um, I've just invested in, in my body. But cardio, cardio really helps, and watching what you eat mm -hmm. helps a lot. You know, um, detox. Mm -hmm. Get all those toxins um, out of your body. You can do that. There's many ways you can Google mm -hmm. uh, and see what works for you. You know, what may work for you may not work for me. That's true. You know what I mean? So stop, you know, uh, my girlfriend said the lemon <laughs> tea and the honey and all that. That may not work for you. Right. Yeah. So so do what works for you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you'll be okay. Okay. You'll be okay. okay. Nice. Nice. Um... Now we talked about what you do as far as your profession is concerned. Have you had to change things with the way you, you work in your profession when it has to do with your health? Um, man, I had some miserable times uh, last year. I mean, as DJ knows, you know, toting speakers and mm -hmm. equipment around, it, it isn't fun. Okay. You know, I laugh at people when they say, you know, I only wanted you to DJ for... Um, for two hours or three hours, why are you charging that much? You right. know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's a lot before the fact and yeah. a lot after the fact. People don't, don't even consider. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it, it, it got rough. 
you know, because um, I was unhealthy, mm -hmm. you know, lugging speakers all over the place. But now everything I do as far as movement, I look at it as a form of exercise. Okay. So I feel better. So that's, that's better on my end as far as um, setting up and, you know, toting the speakers, you know, I, I don't, I don't care. Like I said, it's, it's a form of exercise for me now. But um, it's a whole lot easier, right. a whole lot easier now. And I'm able to have more fun with my clients and my parties and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, because I can breathe better. Right. You right. know. Right. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, and this is about to get a little personal, okay. <laughs> when it comes to, Shoot. well, first of all, are you married? Uh, no. You're, you're not no, married. No. Okay. So have you found that even... Because I want to hit all aspects. We talked about you personally. We talked about you professionally. What about relationship-wise? Has it has dating been different with your health? Has has you know <laughs> relationships been different? Do you uh, see things differently now because of your health? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> caught you off guard. <laughs> Did I caught me off guard? <laughs> I mean, because for me, I, 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 yeah. you know, for me, you um, when, with me, I, I'm constantly complaining about my weight. I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose uh -huh. weight, right? Um, and so when I go out with my girlfriends, we all kind of, what are you eating? You know, let's not eat that, so forth and so on. But I know that people, like I have a girlfriend, she just had a uh, surgery to help her lose weight. And she was saying how her confidence is, is coming back now that she feels sexier now with her husband because she's losing weight so forth and so on. So, how is it for you? You know, there's you, a whole you, lot of laughing going on on this spread no, right now. I know, but you've lost weight. You're you're a handsome oh guy. Oh my god, it's a lot. Of, it, it, it's a lot of laughing going on on the other side of that camera right now. You know, um, and you have like a boost of confidence. Oh, uh, people all say a lot of people say I don't need no more confidence. You know what I mean? But um, but don't don't. Don't confuse. <laughs> Don't confuse confidence mm -hmm. and cockiness. Oh yes, yes. Please say that again because I said that before. Don't confuse <laughs> confidence yes. with cockiness. Yes. Yes. Because you don't know my story. Okay. You understand tell, what I'm tell saying? Tell us your story. We got another. No, no. Minutes. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you don't know the story of my life, you know. And when when God has delivered you from the things that He's delivered me from, mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> I'm confident okay. because I I know I know who that is. Okay. You know I know who my protector is, so I can walk around confident okay. in who I am okay. in this world. You know, of course, of course, when the weight drops, when Our the weight dog is trying to join the interview. <laughs> of course, you know when the weight drops. You know, um, people. Oh, you look so good. You look good. You look good. The inbox will start and all that. <laughs> But um, it, it's not about that. It, it's not. It, honestly, it's not about that. I thank everybody for that that says, yeah, Steve, you made the improvements in your life. Mm -hmm. You're looking good now. You know, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, but it, it's not about that. You know, when you, when, you get, when you get to a point in life that God grabs your attention the way that he does, your focus shifts a whole nother way. You know, so uh, am I the same person that I was last year? No. Mm -hmm. I can truly say that I, I'm not. I, I think a whole lot different than I did before. I appreciate everything mm -hmm. that I've learned in the past. All my friends have great friends, uh, great associates. Um, all my guys I used to watch football with at the press box. <laughs> You know, stats, I still see them. I still see them out and everything, you know, and they look at me, you know, and and and, and I'm going to tell you this. Everybody can't stand to see you blessed. That's true. That's Everybody, true. Everybody's not going to be happy for you. That's true. Because to be happy for you, then they got to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. And they have to make some changes for themselves. So, therefore, everybody's not going to be happy, but you're not looking for them to um to give you that pat yourself on the back 
self-gratification is the best gratification that there is out there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, you'll start, you'll start paying more attention right. to yourself and your surroundings. Um, I try in every, every aspect of my life now, I try to, um, have healthy surroundings. Okay. Okay. I try to have healthy energy around me on all sides, all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do negative energy, and if the negative gen energy comes anywhere around me, I, I just go the other way. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't have time for the stress because stress makes you what? Um, it makes it makes you makes go to the refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> eat. eat. Stress yeah. makes makes me eat. Yeah. You know, because we do those things. That, we do those things: drink, eat, smoke, mm -hmm. all of those things when we're stressed out. You know what I mean? So we try to get rid of that stress out of your life, you know, and that way you can be healthy and do the healthy things that you're supposed to do. Right, right. Good, good. Um, when it comes to just for your family, does your family have any, do they have any of these issues, high blood pressure, Absolutely. congestive heart failure? Absolutely. How, how are you helping them? How Absolutely. are you helping your friends and family who might be going through the same thing? Well, well the thing about it, the thing about it, I remember it so, so plain, laying in the hospital bed and the doctors, Lord knows, you, you see countless doctors. Mm -hmm. And I remember the one lady doctor, you know, my mother and my father were actually in the room mm -hmm. when she said, does um, congestive heart failure run in your family? Mm -hmm. And my dad, he said, you know, my father, he passed away from it. Okay. And then my mom, she said, you know, her sister okay. uh, passed away from it. And then my cousin, uh, she was sitting there in the room, and her mother passed away mm. from complications with her heart. Mm. So with all of this knowledge mm -hmm. of this stuff going on in my family, mm -hmm. I still didn't think that it could happen to me. Right. You know, which was, um, I was stupid on my part. Mm -hmm. I can say that. So um, it's important to look at those things that run in your family mm -hmm. and be tested for them. There, there's no, there's no, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't be tested right. for those things. I mean, the best, that's the best thing to do. Uh, test yourself. High, high blood pressure runs in your family, pay attention to your high blood pressure. If diabetes runs in your family, pay attention to the diabetes. You know, uh, your diabetes. Um, get scans. If breast cancer runs in your family, ladies, go get checked out. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, takes, it takes one appointment. Take preventive measures. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly uh, uh, what I'm doing. But as far as my family, I mean, I... I I have a great family. Yeah. You know, they was they were so supportive through the whole thing. Still are supportive, and I can tell that what happened to me kind of turned the light switch on in my whole entire family. And now, yeah, know. that was my point. Um, with my father, he had congestive heart failure, he had sarcoidosis, he had high blood pressure, and so um, I have a mm, costochondritis. So costochondritis feels like someone is punching you in your chest and it's inflammation. But because of my father's background, they always make sure that my heart is okay. Um, high blood pressure. I'm teetering right there on the line of having high, of having, um, I'm sorry, diabetes. I'm right there on the line of having diabetes. So I'm learning how to eat better because I don't want to go over that line. I don't want to get diabetes, but it runs in my family. So that's very important for everyone in your family, especially immediate family, if you have something going on, even for your son to get tested, to make sure that his heart is, his, his, is good, to make sure that he's keeping his blood pressure the way it's supposed to and so forth. Um, it's really important. And my sisters as well have also, um, my one sister has sarcoidosis. Um, once she got tested and they found out she did, I got tested, my other sister got tested and we don't, but I think it's very important. And also, I know that you, was it Thanksgiving? You hosted Thanksgiving? Yeah. So when you, when you host things for a family, do you, does that change? You know, do people stop bringing certain kind of foods now, or y'all 
just trying to eat healthier now together? Like, how, how does that go? Because it's Thanksgiving with just a bunch of greens. And <laughs> how, did, how did that go? It was, funny. It, was funny. it was funny because I actually went out of town. I hosted Christmas. Oh, okay, life. Christmas. Okay. I went out of town for Thanksgiving. And, okay. and, and um, it was food prepared for me that... <laughs> Didn't have any sodium in it whatsoever. Okay. It was prepared for me. Just every, for every, everybody kind of got mad at me because the food didn't have no sodium in it, you know. But um, but you know, and then Christmas time, it, it's just about being smart, right? You know, um, and using what makes sense, right? You know, so I'm not saying at Christmas time all the food didn't have any sodium in it. It had sodium in it. But just not that much. And then when the plate got in front of me, how many times do you pick up the salt shaker before you even taste your food? My son does that. I don't know why he does that. I mean, and, that, and, that, and that's <laughs> he ludicrous. Does that. I was one of the ones who did yeah, that too. Uh -huh. You know, especially in the morning, I love my grits and my eggs uh -huh. and my sausage. And when the, when the lady puts the plate there with my grits on, the first thing I do, hey, I don't taste, taste it. I put some salt and pepper on it, salt and pepper on my eggs. Don't even know what the cooks put in it right, back there. Right, right. You know? So, um, I was one of those ones like that. Okay. So, okay. I mean, now, now, you know, I challenge everybody. Taste your food. Just taste it. <laughs> give, give, the, give the chef a chance. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, it might already be too to like it. You know? So, that's um, yeah, that. yeah. So, um, that's basically what I, what I do okay. now, but... I'm, I'm just really strict yeah. about what I put inside of my body mm -hmm. now because I, I promise you, I'm not going. If I can help, if I can help, uh -huh. I'm not going back in that hospital. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't like hospitals. Yeah. And guys, if you don't like needles, you really need to go to the doctor <laughs> because I can't tell you how many needles. Over those days that I had stuck in my arms, drawing blood, uh, I mean, all, oh my gracious, oh my God, yeah, my, my, I, I can, chills run up and down me now because I'm, not, I don't like really like yeah. needles. Yeah. But um, I mean, I was stuck so many times in that hospital, you know. Um, so I mean, honestly, you can prevent a lot of things if you just make that appointment right. and go to the doctor. Well, I hope I didn't catch you off the spot, off the spot too much. No. <laughs> Asking you, well, how has it changed for you personally? Um, but also with the family, when we were taking care of my dad, um, probably the last two years, we, we all started changing things for him. Um, we had the Mrs. Dash in the house. We were cutting down on, on putting salt in food. Um, we stopped bringing sodas in the house. So all of us started changing our way of eating. Um, because we wanted to be supportive of him. So that was the reason I asked you about that as far as Christmas was concerned. <clears throat> so what are you doing now? What are you doing to help <laughs> my kids, people? So what are you doing now? What are you doing to, to share your story, to, to let other people know, you know, what your story was, what you've done to change? What are you doing now? Well, Not just for yourself, but for other people. They call me the challenger. Okay. Every day um, when I wake up, y'all know if you're friends with me on Facebook, I try to share some inspiration okay. and throw a health challenge out there for everybody. Like today was 5,000 minute uh, of exercise. I got 5,000 Facebook friends. Okay. So I thought it'd be cool to throw a 5,000 minute um, exercise challenge out there that we could all come together okay. collectively. Okay. And just add our minutes up that we've exercised on the day. Okay. You know, I let it off. I think I did like one, uh, um, 125 minutes okay. today okay. myself. But, you know, probably when I leave here, some more people have come on the thread and dropped their minutes off. And I calculate them. I think last week we got up to 70, 1,794 minutes. Okay. Which okay. was cool. Hey, right. I, I'm like, yeah, right. that's what right. we're doing. Right. You know, but we try, I try to come up. You know, Facebook has a, some talking the craziest challenges that are out there, mm -hmm. you know? But when do we do things that, that help us? Right. Like healthy challenges. Right. Hold each other accountable. Right. 
you know, and the thing about it is, you know, you have those negative people. Who does he think that he is? Now he's some <laughs> Richard Simmons type guy. He's throwing challenges out there. All like he's a healthy. Don't pay a bit of attention right. to those people because I don't. Right. I don't. With that $34,000 <laughs> bill came in my mailbox, uh -huh. right? It was addressed to me. So I don't care nothing about the way you think. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. But my thing, my thing is, you know, um, all my friends, you know, um, on Facebook, associates on Facebook, you know, um, we we count exercise minutes. Um, we we drink and try to drink a gallon of water a day, flush yourself out, you know. We journal, we write things out, we we hold ourselves accountable. Um, Y'all know what we do. So, <laughs> some, something every I day. I don't know what you do. <laughs> something every day, you know. Um, Really what I do, and, and I do it. When I wake up in the morning, you know, I say my prayer, and then whatever, whatever's led, whatever I'm led to do okay. on that day, you know, we weighed last Wednesday, okay. you know, um, which I told people to post it if they wanted to. If they didn't, write it down somewhere. Okay. Set a goal. Mm -hmm. Where do I want to be in four months, in five months, in six months? Where do I want my weight to be? Okay. Okay. And then... Do the things that will get you there. Okay. I know I can't sit in front of, uh, I can't eat a whole pound cake. <laughs> and I got a goal that I got to hit. Okay. I know. It's mm -hmm. it's common sense, Tiffany. It right. is. It is right. common sense. So, I mean, I try to I try to encourage people. I try to lift, lift people up. And I try to educate them on what I know because I don't know everything. Right. No, I don't know everything. I got some friends out there now. Shout out Diamond Williams. She's, hey. <laughs> you know, she talks about health a lot, you know, with Atrium Health. Um, and, and I have some more friends, you know, that, that really, they talk to me about things. Mandy at the Y Harrisburg, you know, um, they talk to me about things that, you know, we should be doing with our bodies. And, you know, I try to hang around those people who have that same fire okay. that I have. They want to see everybody healthy. Right. Because that encourages me and keeps me going. Right. You know, I just can't do this by myself. Right. You know what I mean? I, I need a group, a group, mm -hmm. a surrounding cast around me to to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you put it out there. What? How much weight have you lost since September? 70. I've lost as of now. I weighed this morning. It was 375 when I went in the hospital. Uh -huh. And I weigh 304 now, so 71 pounds. 71 pounds. So what is your goal in six months? Uh, I want to be somewhere around the 280 okay. range. Okay. I don't want to get too small. Mm -hmm. My Please head, don't. my head will be Please really, Please really big. <laughs> you know, when, when I was little, I had big ears. So I, I don't want my head to shrink no more. My ears come back out. They start laughing at me again. So, okay, okay. Yeah. So six months wouldn't be a 280. What about a year? Stay at 280. Stay at 280. Stay okay. At 280. So once you get to 280, that's your goal. That's my goal. I want to stay right there. Got it. Got yeah. it. Well, I want to know, is it okay for me to share your challenges? You can do whatever you want to do. Whatever whatever enables people to be healthy and, and live a healthy life, share it. Thank share you. it. But we're going to be doing some some things over the spring, over the summer. <laughs> we're going to get together sometimes on Saturday mornings. Okay. Uh, run some steps, even walk. Okay. You know. I, I can't run. Hey, <laughs> hey, even walk. Hey, right. I, I'll be there walking with you. Don't know getting right. Hopefully get some, you know, instructors, you know, and get out here. And I don't care if it's for 45, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Okay. The thing about it is, I want to get in your mind, do something. Right. Do something. And also, you know, try to set, we're going to try to set up some, some classes with some nutritionists okay. that people are able to come to that you just don't know. What's healthy for you and what's not healthy mm -hmm. for you, as far as foods out here are concerned, you know, and how to season your foods, mm -hmm. you know, without using a ton of sodium. Okay. And there's there's classes out here that you can attend, mm -hmm. you know. We'll turn we'll attend all the other classes, but those classes that right. really <laughs> help us right. help us to accomplish those goals for right. those classes that we are attending. Okay, yeah. all right. So what I would like to do, and I'm pretty sure you'll say yes, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. I want to know if we can check in with you monthly Absolutely. to kind of get some feedback from you, for you to kind of share what you're doing, um, share, you know, maybe some things that are working for you. Um, because we we are asking people that are doing things, not just for themselves, but for others, 
Um, but for you, what you're doing is helping you, is helping you getting you healthy, um, making sure that you are living a lifestyle that keeps you with your heart getting stronger and hopefully bringing that, that blood pressure down. So this is something that you're doing that can help me. It can help, it can help Cedric. It can help a lot of different people. Um, so I wanna know if we can check in with you monthly and just kind of see where you are, see what you're doing, see, see what is working for you. Um, and whenever you have like your classes or you want to do workshops or whatever, let us know so that we can come and we can participate, let other people know, um, because this is really important. Absolutely. This is really important. Um, and I, I'm going to be very honest. I have been slacking for years when it comes to my health. Um, and again, I always complain about my weight. And so I've been telling people this year, this is the year that I'm going to start exercising more. And I'm going to start doing more. And as you say, do something. Do something. Uh, that That's very big. I'm about, I'm about to tag you as a do something man. That's what you're going to do. Do something, man. <laughs> do something. The hey, do I'll something take man. I'll take do something. I'll take do something, do something about it. Do something. It. Do something. <laughs> yeah. So um, I want to thank you for coming and being on the Speak Up and Inspire series. We'll be playing this all week. We'll probably be playing it on a regular basis. Uh, because we want people to hear this, these type of things, especially with us doing our self-care mm -hmm. challenge for 2020. So now it's your time for 2020. What is your self-care goal for 2020? Well, my self-care goal for 2020, when you said that, I started thinking. My first self-care uh, goal for 2020 is to get a closer relationship with God. That's number one. Okay. Uh, number two is actually to work um, towards being a better man and a healthier man. Okay. Um, and my third would be to work smarter and not harder. And probably my fourth one would be to continue to strengthen the legacy, my legacy that I leave down here. Now that we're kind of we're thinking the, thinking the right way that we should be mm -hmm. thinking. Um, we're, 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 I, I'm, I'm concentrating more on leaving a legacy mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. now. Okay. You have a son, right? Uh, I have a daughter. You have a daughter. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I, I mentioned son. I have a okay. Daughter. You have a daughter. Yeah. How are you teaching her to live better? Since um, what we, to you? we, we actually talked to, and she has some health issues herself. Mm -hmm. So basically when I'm, I, I encourage her to, um, to get to get checked out and do the necessary things that she needs to get done because the same high blood pressure that I walk around with, she has also. Okay. So um, we're, we're we're working on that and through that, you know, some people are prideful, so you just gotta you gotta work you work your way through it. But all you all all we can do is plant a seed in somebody's head. Right. That's all we can do. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being on our on our podcast. Um, thank you for bearing with us while we were setting everything up. This is our first time using the setup that we have going on right now, so thank you for doing that with us. Um, I definitely will be checking in with you monthly. I'll probably be saying, hey, let's go live for a second, tell us what you're doing. Um, but I want you to tag me when you're doing things so that I can know about it and I can push it out there to others. Um, I think it's really important what you're doing, especially the reason why you're doing it. Unfortunately, people, have to be hospitalized <laughs> to get that wake up call, yeah. but not everybody has to get that kind of wake up. You don't call. have to. Yeah. You don't have to. You can save yourself a lot of money. But I thank you so much for having me. I, um, I enjoy telling my story. If I can just help one person, yeah. just one, just one. You know, um, um, it's Martin Luther King's birthday. You know, and you know he said, you know, if I can just help somebody, then my living won't be in vain. And that's that's, that's the way. I'm really uh, focusing on it. And that's my heart. Mm -hmm. If I can just help one, mm -hmm. you know, then my living's not in vain. Thank you. And that is the whole purpose of the Speak Up and Inspire series, is to ins have people speak up so they can inspire others to change. So that's a good ending. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Tiffany. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is Speak Up and Inspire series with Stephen Govain, and you can find him where? 
How can they? How can people find you if they want to reach out about you? Can, you can reach reach me on my Facebook page at Stephen Golan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can inbox me there or at Grooves underscore Entertainment on Instagram. Again, that's at Grooves G R O O V E S underscore Entertainment on Instagram. And if they want to. Hit you up for business? Either, either one of those. Just either hit me one. on my okay. Facebook page, Grooves <laughs> underscore entertainment on Instagram, or you can email me at djgroove at carolina.rr.com. Nice. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>